bringing this thing back to basics, going full circle, making sure that we complete what we came here to talk about on Ego Killer Motivation. TGIM, thank God, it's Monday. It gives us another chance, another crack at it, another swing with the axe to try to bring down that tree, that tree being our long-term goals, taking days to get there, but never stopping swinging that axe. And look, we do this on Ego Killer Motivation, peeling away layers of the human condition, because at the end of the day or beginning of the week, if we're talking metaphorically, it's all about our relationship with our fitness, how that works into our daily life, and getting through all those roadblocks to get there. This place has been, since 2018, a forum that I wanted to reach out to you guys after meeting you over the course of many years to discuss what holds you up. It started with me thinking about the weight room, seeing the struggles, the hurdles that you guys jump through, the barriers that you roll with inside the weight room, talking with you guys while literally working out, hearing about your sticking points and trying to put all of that together and glue all of those experiences underneath one nexus right here in the gym, wherever your gym is, wherever you call your playground for fitness for the hour, for the week, whatever it was. That's what it was all about. And in doing that, we have to challenge what we came up learning, you know, some stereotypes about lifting weights, throwing off the way that you play certain sports, whether you're a pitcher, you're a boxer, you're a basketball player, maybe you're a cyclist, too much muscle, right? Too much muscle throwing off your body, making you kind of bulky, and we have to smash through some of that. And if we were raised a certain way to think that lifting weights was bad or deleterious for us, well, getting through that is a moment where we can kind of placate, or sorry, get rid of the ego and start to weave a new narrative. Maybe it's something else, right? It's not about just your strength training. Maybe it's about your eating. And we already heard that you're not supposed to eat past, what is it now, 7 p.m., right? Most of you are in the gym at 7 p.m. And then if you're not eating after you get out of the gym, why did you come to the gym? But we're told that. We're told that. And across all of these conversations that we have, we say, hey, eating past 7, it means that it's going to promote insulin spiking. And what is insulin? Well, don't worry about that. Just don't eat. And how does that compromise? And if you're someone that's going to stick to that mentality, well, you're not really ready to challenge your ego about your eating, right? I have to talk with you guys and say, hey, nah, that's not the move. Well, why? what are we looking for? Are we looking for weight loss? Are we looking for strength training? Are we looking for muscle? Are we looking to just change our eating to keep that doctor away? And there's all these kind of cross-ups that happen so that's what ego killer was supposed to be about from day one so let's get back to it why not we're gonna talk a lot because let's be honest what good is like a challenging conversation about fitness if it doesn't challenge convention and what is the number one convention that you guys have been messing with low these many years as i talk about it with you it's like i'm here to lose weight i'm here to lose weight that's the number one reason I've met so many of you over the years. When it comes to your f- fitness, specifically, it's like I'm trying to lose weight. You got something up, I'm trying to lose weight. After sitting down with you guys for a number of sessions, a few hours, I'm talking with you guys. We're building rapport after and realize that it's not about losing weight. I don't know if that's the easiest entry point, but I kind of think it has a lot to do with we're told like you're supposed to look a certain way. It's aesthetic. You got to lose weight to do that. And so and that's what it becomes. But by and large, you guys don't really want to lose all that much weight unless you're really in a space where you're unhealthy. Or we're in a space where we could lose 5, 10, 15, maybe 20. And then that's it right there. But along the way, there comes this nice acceptance. So which one is it, right? Is it strength or is it weight loss? Let's break it all the way down.
the dopest stories that I've heard in the gym, right? And you can't tell when you're training in fight gyms at, you know, at the level, I want to say, that I was doing it at, right? I was always someone that came in with a level of training and a background of athleticism, at least in something else. So by the time I'm meeting folks in a fight gym, it's because, you know, you're sparring, you're banging head to glove, you're doing all that stuff, you're training, and you're not messing around, right? You're expected to do a little bit more than just show up on the outside. Or, you know, there have been times where I've gone to other towns and trained with their people. And um, even though I'm not expected to do stuff, they invite me with the knowledge that, hey, you're working with a team. This means we're going at it. And so you should have had to do your homework before you came through the doors today. If not, well, it's going to be a rough day type of mentality. But what the coolest thing in the world is how many of you guys I've heard about later on that started training in fight gyms trying to lose weight and it turns into that was the impetus that was the beginning stages how many mixed martial artists are there that have that how many female mixed martial artists are out there that have also been on that where they just took one class and then all of a sudden they're traveling to uh you know to germany to end up being on some kickboxing show like i've heard a a lot of mainstream stories in that regard where it starts out being about fitness and weight loss. And then it turns into, no, wait, I'm here to build strength and all the other, you know, all the other beautiful martial arts type stuff. I love that. I love that. It highlights the paradox that exists in gym. It highlights the paradox of gym culture, which is it shouldn't ever have always been just about losing weight at some point juncture it became that it is in fact about mm, building strength that's what it's about it's building strength both in and outside it's about building strength it's about challenging your perception about what you know about your body and its ability to perform and to do that we're going to talk about three types of limiting beliefs that I think might hold you guys back and that I've seen over the years having to do with your identity and your exercise choice, right? Like if you're skinny, you can't be doing this. And if you're, you know, agile, you should only be doing this. And if you have a lifestyle that bleeds into mindfulness, you can only be working with this type of modality. And how much of that becomes us trying to hide from those Really narrow, narrow, ego-driven choices that we have to make. And then it ends up being tough for you guys to get off in the gym and do your thing. Now, now I'm out here seeing these football players on the reformer just shaking like a palm tree in the middle of a hurricane in Broward County in August. And I love it because what we're doing out here is we're mixing and matching I was watching Larry Wheels the other day, YouTuber Larry Wheels. He's a bodybuilder and a powerlifter, right, in the vein of Ronnie Coleman. And he's over there at some Pilates, Club Pilates in um, Southern Cali working out. And he was really attentive to it, you know. This is just kind of a byproduct of the mentality of you, you, um, you Zoomers. You guys are all for the business. This wasn't the thing when even my... What are we, Gen Y, millennial types are over here working out. And it's kind of like you got to pick one or the other. You got to be, you know, blood or crip, Democrat, Republican, pick one. You can't do many. We forgot, though, that the many was the answer. The second thing, perfection. The idea that perfection and weight loss is what you're supposed to be looking at. The idea that losing weight is you trending towards perfection and nobody wants to be perfect i'm gonna tell you do you really want to be perfect how boring are you when you're perfect when you're always striving towards perfection and then the idea that working towards that one singular goal you're missing the entire journey the entire entire journey i can remember being in this certain situation myself all i wanted to do was transfer schools back to my old school 
right, and start training. I wanted to fight, and I wanted the big fights. And for months, for months, showing up to practice, just hurting, just hurting, sore, tired, but grinding away and getting better. And it was rough. It was rough because I had a coach who was really kind of militant with his. And I don't mean militant like he's a revolutionary, palms in the air, although he's kind of that too. But I mean somebody that was very militaristic. It was all about the rigid kind of adherence to working out really, really hard. And I really was about that lifestyle. And so I would show up to practice no matter what, no matter how I felt, no matter how my body worked. Well, let's just say before COVID happened, like right before, my hip gave out, gave out. And the closer I got to getting to that goal, I kept hitting roadblocks and to stay focused was really hard. And all the fun had gone out of my training for sure. The idea of perfection, the idea that I'm supposed to be in the gym at 730, no matter what, perfect. I'm supposed to be out here training hitting those combos perfect i'm supposed to be a good little soldier perfect none of that was fun at all so i got news for you let that go the idea of perfection man that's boring have some fun in your life make sure you're out here making it move for yourself making yourself happier along the way because perseverance is what we're looking for and then lastly we're talking about Ooh, that ego of comparison. So those are the three things. The ego of comparison and how social media has taken that on. And it has. It's made it such that you don't seem to really... The the bar has been set higher and higher over the past five or so years. The fitness influencers who maybe started working out, make no mistake... A lot of people could have just been working out for three or four years, and now they have bodies like just Vitruvian women and men looking perfect and only been at this thing for like three to five years. Depending on how often you hit it, how many pro athletes around you that you have that are giving you advice, how much social media you in turn or they in turn, these influencers, look at. They don't have to be seasoned experts, right? You never make that same assumption about your doctor. Your doctor had to go through medical school, and then they had to intern. All of that takes years, many years, right? So when the dentist is poking around your teeth, the ophthalmologist is making you look through some ancient-looking medieval type, you know, trying to look at the back of your eye and talk about vitreous fluid or whatever, you know that they already did that work. Your car mechanic, if you guys still don't drive EVs, (laughs) Your combustion engine over there, you know your mechanic had to go through lots and lots of training. That's why when you open that, hear that weird sound in your engine, the mechanic says, hey, turn that radio down. Yep, you're about to throw a rod. You have 47 more. You know, it's because <laughs> they're trained. Well, th- something happened along the way. We we lost that. There's no scholarship necessary inside the world of influencing and fitness. And so... That became a series of showy movements. Frankly, I'm a, it just it became a circus, didn't it? It became, it's become a circus where you are literally able to see people do really dope fitness stuff, and then they're kind of mantled as experts and professionals. Why? Because the more clicks and love that they get, they get paid. So this thing has become something like pro wrestling, where once upon a time there was actual wrestling and actual skill involved. And in order to get that to the masses, what we had to do was turn this into a wolf tickets. Turn it into wolf tickets. This can make us really, really disillusioned about the nature of my body, what my body's trying to do, my my clothes, my body's trying to fit into, right, if you're that way, what you think strength really is, because strength should be something functional and not something that you compare to other people necessarily, especially when other people, imagine if you're someone who picks up and moves boxes for a living, or you stock shelves, right? Or you're someone that has to 
fulfill orders. So you're moving things in the warehouse left to right, left to right. Maybe you're just doing a repeating process of lifting really light things a bunch of times, right? I remember I've trained a bunch of teachers, and at the end of the year, they're basically rearranging their whole room, right? Sometimes you guys are out gardening. Maybe even if you're of the age where you do spend a lot of time in the yard because you're, you, I don't know, you have to be young to, you have to be older to garden. If you're spending a lot of time in your yard right there, you're building all that repeating muscle. Does that mean you lack strength? And it definitely, definitely does it, all right? The idea that this whole thing, okay, is based around losing weight is a false premise and promise. Ooh. Sometimes I'll be watching MMA, which is mixed martial arts. These guys, these men and women have to learn multiple types of martial arts. Over the years, what happened is it became its own hybrid martial art where you could just go to any MMA type of gym and pick up MMA itself. And you don't have to learn 17 different martial arts and combine them into one thing and then go out there and spar and be like, yo, my karate was better than your kung fu now you could just learn mma right you could just learn mma and where i'm going with this was over time what you saw was people who got really really good at one thing and then they didn't want to do the other thing at all and the problem with that especially in the context of mma is it's called grappling someone's gonna put their paws on you <laughs> and you don't know how to get away you're screwed no matter, I don't care what you know, if someone got their paws on you, you let them get close enough, first of all, to get their paws on you. If they're trying to take something from you, if they're trying to threaten you, accost you, or get inside of your personal space, and you don't have any sense of how to break grips, for example, or how to make your own grips, how to grab, you're screwed. And so the folks that didn't want to learn how to do the thing that made them uncomfortable, it was all ego. And the fighters who didn't do that pretty much, to me, was like, oh, that is a really ego-driven fighter. Super ego-driven fighter. Because that fighter didn't want to learn how to punch because all they knew how to do was wrestle. Ego-driven. The same thing happens outside when we're talking about our fitness because you're too big to be on the treadmill running. And so doing that, cardio, right? Heard the term, you skinny guys in your cardio. And I'm thinking like, man, look, <laughs> skinny guys, skinny people in their cardio. It's just a function of you could do pretty much anything for 30 seconds. <laughs> if you get into a situation where you're going to need endurance overwhelming power choose endurance okay and here's why if someone can, if there is a challenge or if there was if someone's trying to take your stuff from you and in the back of your mind you don't know a whole lot you know enough to get somebody to not take your stuff right away they have to put up kind of a fight and in the back of your mind you're like all i have to do is wait two minutes and I'll win this entire thing. You already lost the battle. If you think that you won the battle already. <laughs> do not send out the smoke signal. Or the any signal. Do not write on your shirt. That says. I only got enough juice for 90 seconds. After that. You could dog walk me. If this was a physical confrontation. And remember we're not front runners. We keep coming up with fresh ideas. No matter what. When we're exhausted. That's us. Just being exhausted. We're not quitters. We don't end early to get out of that uncomfortable feeling. And so our exercise choices have everything to do with strength. Your weight loss exercise choices have everything to do with doing the thing that's going to make you lose weight. And only that stuff. Your exercise choices when you have to be with, I'm going to try to lift the most amount of weight in the room. Because I want to be powerful. Will be limited to that stuff. 
far too many times that can lead to injury. So what do we do about it? Well, we stop chasing number two perfection right there, right? Stop chasing that perfection. Every time you guys come in and you start talking about losing vast amounts of weight for yourself, we almost can turn around and see that there is this perfection that we're trying to chase. There's an idea, there's an image, there is a sentiment, a mainstream one that says you're supposed to look a certain type of way. Here's your body type. That's You're just not perfect. So boring. Oh, man, how, how whack is that? That you're sitting here thinking that whatever that you have, what your belief is, that idea that you're supposed to strive for is the only one that, 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 that perfection, right? So boring. So boring. Miss me with that. What stories do you get to tell when you're like, yeah, I've been on point with my eating for the last 250 days straight. No, yeah, no cheat days at all, right? None, none, zero. And it's been pretty easy. I get up at 6 a.m. I'm out the door. I run 10 miles. And uh, no, no, no injuries. What's a, no, none, not at all. And even when you do get injured, right? You just, you know, oh, I, I just take a day off. These are unsexy stories to tell. <laughs> Perfection, the idea is so unsexy. <laughs> Listen, it's always been my belief. I want you guys to train with me so hard that you have to tell a story about why. Why your push-up form is getting better. Why your road to recovery has been so enlightening for you. Why you're walking hella funny up the stairs. I want you guys to be able to tell a story to somebody that um, close to you, a loved one, where you have to explain why you're so damn sore. Because we do this to share experiences with one another. The idea of perfection needs to be replaced instead with perseverance. The idea that you're here for the long term. We're never front runners when we're out here doing it and looking for that weight loss, looking for that perfection. It, any weight loss program is going to be really devoid of perseverance. That's why you see so many crash diets. That's why you see so many quick fixes, so much ephemeral bullshit. Because lost in that formula, in that alchemy, is the idea that perseverance needs to be at the forefront of whatever it is that you're going to do right there it needs to be number one. You guys embracing, embracing a mindset where even your challenges are moments for you guys to improve and get back after it, to deepen your groove right there, to see what you're made of pretty much. All right. And that perfection, I don't tell any stories. That perfection just makes people want to stay away from you for as long as possible. They might want to mimic you in the short term, but that's just because they're reducing you to some sticker book cardboard cutout of what the actual grind is supposed to be like. You're just an avatar. You're as good as your social media cover picture is and nothing else. And how deep is that? Like how deep, how much depth is there in a sticker? Not much. And speaking of it, the last thing is social media influence, right? I already talked to you about that economy and what that economy has kind of done to your expectations. It's leveled them to the moon, right? My goodness. My God. Because you're supposed to be able to hip thrust 400 pounds and you're supposed to be able to do as many pull-ups as possible. You're supposed to be able to... Do both, right? You're supposed to be able to snatch 200 and sprint in the treadmill at a 15. Forgetting that those folks did a lot of work to get there. And, well, that isn't the penultimate of fitness. Because what we want to look for and why we, why I believe that fighting is probably the most important type of lifestyle that you can involve yourself with when it comes to physical stuff. Or very much, I shouldn't say the most important, but I should say the most complete. Is because 
are we transferring those skills? Like, if you're really dope, you're <laughs> let's just say you're dope at doing inverted sit-ups or something like that. Tell me how that transfers to all of the things. You have extraordinary hip flexors, right? You look amazing in a pair of like in a one p in a in a two piece bikini or like you you know you're breaking necks in those board shorts, <laughs> right? Oh lordy, right? And you know you're getting those full extension. You probably have no back problems at all, right? You're bordering on perfect. <laughs> You're boarding on perfect. Your hip flexors are dope. You're, you have no spinal stenosis or kyphotic curvatures, over uh, hyperkyphosis uh, to speak of, right? Your spine's just cool. And you look dope doing it. Are you hiking that much? Are you on the bike at all? Can you last two rounds? Can you do a little bit of everything? Have we done so much that we're unable to transfer any of that stuff to anything else? Shout out to you guys who are using the sled in the gym every day. I love the sled because I feel like that has a super duper high transference. Now, if you do it super duper heavy all the time, not so much. But those of you guys who load it with submaximal weight, dragging, pulling, you know, um, bear walking, that sled, oh, I'm with you. I love that. High transference. For me, into other types of fitness, definitely strengthening your mindset, right? But looking for that comparison makes us really, really forget how much is beneath the surface. Makes it impossible for you to get there because you ain't going to know how much work it takes to get there. You're just going to want to look at that last finishing product. And if you get that product and you think it's a win. All right, my friends, so basically, we're thinking this week, all week on a TGI Monday about how we're going to break through convention and achieve balance, balance between strength and the need for weight loss or perfection inside the gym, and that's where we're going to hit it up tomorrow when we talk about that on Tough Love Tuesday. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a good one, not too earth-shattering. All right, my friends, and that's where I'm going to leave you for now. Make sure this week is balanced, but make sure it's even better than it could have been in your wildest imagination. And until the next one, stay all the way up.